hey, hey, awesome people. Welcome, Mr. C here. Super pumped that you have joined us for our whole number multiplication unit. This unit is going to cover a lot of things multiplication. Today, in this video, we're just going to be working with the fifth grade standard, specifically area model multiplication. So we're going to do a couple problems. So first off, let me show you our standards. Here they are. As always, there is the Common Core standard. And, you know, I also threw the Missouri Learning Standard on there. I said, hey, I'm in Missouri right now, so why not throw this learning standard up here? As you can see inside that Missouri Learning Standard, it talks about multiplying whole numbers and decimals says right here that decimal piece we won't be jumping into decimals today that'll be future videos be on the lookout for that with that being said feel free to click the subscribe button join us on this math journey i love seeing more and more people join us um, so click subscribe It'll be awesome to have you be notified when any video drops we've got a lot of new things coming out so I do want to show you, I am going to be making videos for the fourth grade standards and the third grade standards. I'll link those videos onto this so you can watch them, make it really easy for you. I'll also put this PowerPoint in there so you can use it as well. All right, so let's get started. Fifth grade standard, we're going to be starting today with a two digit by two digit multiplication problem. And today's video is just going to be about using the area model. All right. Before we get started, like I always say in every video, you got to have the right mindset when you're doing math. So, growth mindset is so critical. Whether you are teaching this to students or you are someone that's learning the area model, you have to have the right mindset. And a growth mindset means that you come into this being okay with struggling, using those struggles, making mistakes, and being okay with making mistakes. Use these mistakes to help you get better. That is super, super important because this may be something that's new. Thank you for joining us. Take your time. Pause the video. Watch it again. Be okay with making mistakes. The more you practice it, the better you're going to get. You just have to have the right mindset. All right, so let's get started. We've got 26 times 18. For the area model, first thing you need to do is draw a figure that looks like this here and I've heard students call it several things sometimes I've heard it called uh, looks like a window or looks like a square looks like a rectangle well whatever you want to call it call it that long as you draw a figure it looks like this next step let's break apart our multiplication problem just like you did in earlier grades this is what you can do when you have a larger multiplication problem so look at this number 26 this number 26, let's break it apart. We have in the tens place, we have two tens. If we have two tw tens, that means that we have 20. All right, so I have 20 because I have two tens. I need to break my area model into two sections now. And I have six ones. So if I have six ones, I'm going to put a six right here. Notice I'm going to put a small addition symbol right here. And the reason I do that is it helps my brain keep track of what I'm doing. It's a nice little trick that I use because 20 plus six equals ding, 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 26. All right. So that's why I break that apart. We took 26. We broke it into the tens. We broke it into the ones. All right. We're going to do the same thing with this 18. All right, how many tens do we have? Well, we've got one ten. So if we've got one ten, that means we have ten. Again, I'm going to break my area model apart. Let's see how my line looks. Oof, not bad. All right, now we have eight ones. So if we have eight ones, we put an eight down here. And again, I like to put a little small addition symbol because it helps my brain keep track. Ten plus eight equals eight. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, this next part. 
I'm gonna show you a trick that I use. I tell students to do this all the time because it helps us get into the habit and get that kind of memorization of what you're multiplying. This is a great way to do it. Use your hands. I tell students all the time, count on your fingers, use your fingers, draw pictures. The more you can do, the better you're gonna be able to learn these types of math things, okay? Math is not just being able to fly through a problem. It's being able to slow down, think through it, come up with strategies to solve it. So here we go. I want you to touch this number over here and say this number okay so I'm gonna touch it and say the number 10 then you come over touch the middle of this box and say times so 10 times and then come up here at the top and touch and say this number here 20 so watch this 10 times 20 10 times 20 that's what we're gonna put right here we're gonna put the answer of 10 times 20 well I don't know about you but uh I don't have my 20 times tables memorized. And that is okay because what I do have memorized is 1 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Take a look. I've got two zeros that I didn't use, so I need to attach those. I haven't touched those, so I need to attach those to my answer. Makes it really simple for you. Let's keep going. Touch the 10. 10. Touch the box. Times. Touch the number up here. 6. 10 times 6. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. And now we're going to talk about this 8. Do the same thing. Touch the 8. 8 times 20. 8 times 20. Newsflash. I don't have my 20s times tables memorized, but I do know what 8 times 2 is. 8 times 2 is 16. How many zeros should I attach? One zero. There we go. All right, let's keep rolling. We got one last box here. Touch the numbers. Eight times six. Eight times six. That gives us 48. I love it. Take a look. Every box we have filled in with a number. All right. What we've done is we have taken a larger multiplication problem and we have broken this up into more manageable chunks. But we are not done because right now we've got to take all of these numbers and we've got to get our total product. Okay, our total product, our final answer for 26 times 18. And honestly, this is the most challenging step for so many students. You have got to write every number that's in here over on the side neatly and without putting them in the wrong place values. Okay, so notice I always put it from greatest to least. So I did 200, 160. Next, I've got 60. And lastly, I'll have 48. This is the way you need to have it set up. Okay, a lot of times what I've seen is I've seen students do all of the hard work here. They kicked butt. They did all of this section here. And then they went too fast over here. And let me show you what they would do. They would write 200, 160, 60, and then they would accidentally write 48 way over here. What's wrong with that? Well, they just wrote the 4, which is in the tens place, in the hundreds column. And that's a huge problem. It's going to cause all types of mistakes later on. So make sure you're being really careful here. We have 48. Didn't mean to erase that. There we go. So I got 48. Now, I just need to add these up. You have to take your time. This is normally where people make their mistakes. They did all the hard work, but they just made mistakes adding. Slow down. Let's look at it. We've got the ones column. Add that up, and we get 8. Now we've got the tens column, 6, 12, 16, carry and regroup, 2 plus 1 is 3 in the hundreds place, plus the 1 is 4, and we are going to be getting an answer of 468. All right, take a moment, take a look at the problem, see where you may have made a mistake at, make a mental note of that, double check your work. That way, you'll be able to take on this next problem. Again, having a growth mindset, having a correct mindset, being okay, being okay with making mistakes and challenging yourself. All right, take a look at that, pause it, watch the video again if you need to, and then we'll jump into our next problem. 
All right, time for our second problem. This one is going to be 347 times 56. Going to be doing the same thing we were doing in that last problem. This one's just a little bit of a more of a challenge. And the reason it is, is because now we've got the number 347. So we've got the hundreds place value. But same thing's going to happen. Let's break this number apart. I see that we have three hundreds. So let's get three hundreds up here. Boom. So we got three hundreds. We've got four tens. So that gives us 40. And then we've got seven ones, so that gives us seven. Again, I'm going to put a small addition symbol because in my head it's going to help me keep track. 300 plus 40 plus 7, fat it all up. That gives me ding, 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 347. All right. Let's break apart 56. So to break apart 56, we have five tens, so that gives us 50. And then we have six ones, so that gives us six. Small addition symbol right there. 50 plus six gives us 56. All right, same thing. I want you touching the numbers over here on the side. Okay, so touch these numbers, touch the box. 50 times 300. 50 times 300. Listen, I don't know if any of y'all know how know your 300 times tables. I personally don't have mine memorized, but I do have five times three memorize five times three equals 15 and there are one two three zeros to attach and that gives me 15,000 next I've got 50 times 40 50 times 40 shortcut is five times four five times four is 20 two zeros that I need to attach make sure you attach those two zeros okay lastly on this top row we've got 50 times 7 50 times 7 well 5 times 7 is 35 there is one zero to attach and there's 350 all right bottom row 6 times 300 6 times 300 well ask yourself what is 6 times 3 6 times 3 is 18. There are two zeros to attach. There we go, 1,800. Next, we've got 6 times 40. 6 times 40. All right, let me think. What is a strategy, a shortcut for this problem? <laughs> well, if you know what 6 times 4 is, that gives you 24 and you can attach this zero so that's 240 again make it simple on yourself there's a lot of strategies that you already know to be able to solve this type of problem all right you already know a lot of strategies we're just adding on to things that you've already learned just making it a little bit more challenging lastly we've got six times seven six times seven that will give us the answer of 42 now is honestly the most challenging part for students and again these are some big numbers so let me get these all written down correctly over here I always write them I want to give myself a little bit more room I always write them from greatest to least 15,000 2,000 I have to make sure that I line up the place values in the correct columns because if I don't it's going to cause a huge headache and it's going to cause all of my hard work to go kaput right at the very end so let me make sure I got it all so let me double check I've got 15,000 I've got 2,000 1,800 350 240 and 42 all right Here's the thing I want to say before we add up these numbers, okay? I love the area model strategy to get you started multiplying. It's a great strategy to get started with. However, once you've mastered this strategy, you really need to move on to that standard algorithm, okay? And the reason that's the case, and I'm going to link a video in here for standard algorithm, is because your numbers are going to get so large when you're multiplying that eventually you're adding so many numbers that it is so, so easy to make a mistake. 
standard algorithm is going to help you kind of simplify and speed up your process. It makes you more efficient. And I tell students all the time, I don't care about how fast you solve problems. Our goal is eventually to be able to get to where you're efficient of solving problems. All right. And some people, you may be most efficient doing area model, and that's totally cool. But I always challenge students to try to find more than one way to solve a problem. All right. With that being said, let's add it up and get our final answer. Let's add the ones column. That's going to give us two. The tens column, that's 9, 13. Regroup that. Uh, the hundreds uh, column, that's 11, 13, 14. The thousands, 7, 8, 9. And the 10,000, that's going to be 1. So our answer for this problem is going to be 19,432. All right, take a look at this, pause the video, watch it again, take a look and see where did you make a mistake, where are you stuck at, where are you challenged at. I'm going to drop another video here that you can click on and watch. It is going to give you some more practice problems to help you solve it using the area model strategy. As always, thanks for watching the video. Drop me some comments. Let me know where you're still having some challenges. Thanks for tuning in. Mr. C out.